Hey everybody, it's your boy Nerdicane, and today I've been thinking about a hypothetical, and I can almost guarantee I'm going to get a um, an angry response video from Ethan Ainsworth, but uh, that's okay. Friends can disagree on things at times, and that's, you know, that's what adults do is they disagree, and they can not even come to a resolution and still be friends. Um, so yeah, that's what adults do. I think a lot of people need to learn, relearn that lesson. But is the time of the floppy over? I've been really thinking about this. Um, we may be in a post, we may be moving into a post floppy world. And it's to us comic book collectors, we are a very traditional bunch. We don't like digital. We've sort of rejected digital. Even they've been trying it for 10 years and it still hasn't caught on. We're not really interested in it. Even in the coronavirus shutdown, the numbers for digital have not gone up as the numbers of print have gone down. But I think when you look at it, there's three factors that I think about when I, when I think about this subject. And they're all sort of combining. Well, the second factor I'm going to talk about is the mismanagement of the comic book industry. And that has led to problem number one, and that leads to problem number three, which I will get into. So problem one, number one, in my opinion, is the cost to profit margin just doesn't work. Um, if you've listened to some of my videos and some of the things I've said, I used to own a restaurant. I used to run a lot of restaurants and restaurants have a razor thin profit margin. So you have to get it right the first time. When you do a burger, you have to get it right the first time. And the, the worst thing about like being in a kitchen, cooking burgers, cooking steaks is someone will order at medium. Your idea, well, the actual textbook professional idea of medium is what somebody would call, you know, what somebody else would call medium well or what somebody else would call rare. Um, the fear goes because you, you won't get, a restaurant won't cook anything under medium because when you get down there, when you get under medium, you start to worry about um, intoxication, food, food poisoning, things like that. So people get upset, you know, the old timers get upset. It's like, oh, why can't I get a... Why can't I get a medium rare steak? Well, we don't want you to get sick and sue us and kill the business. But the profit margin is very thin, even in comics. So you have to think about everything that goes into getting a comic from the writer's brain to your hand. You, you have to pay the writer. You have to pay the artist. You have to pay a colorist. You have to pay an inker, a letterer. You have to pay the printer beyond, you know, beyond just the production of the print file. You have to pay the printer. Beyond the printing, you have to pay the shipper. Um, now, granted, a lot of that was mixed in with, with Diamond, but as we saw recently this year, if Diamond goes down, if Diamond's your, only, your one and only outlet, when Diamond goes down, your whole business goes down. And that's, that's a problem. But beyond that, you have uh, shipping. And then from shipping, you know, it gets to the store, and from the store, even the store has to take a cut because they have to pay somebody to, to open the box. They have to pay an employee to put it on the shelves and then hopefully somebody buys it. And that's where the chain fell apart. That was the weak link in the chain that we got from issue number two that I will get into. People, books were getting on the shelves and then they were just staying on the shelves. My, my comic book shop that I go to, I love my comic book shop. My guys are great because they... They keep an eye on the customers, not in a creepy way, but they'll keep an eye on it. Like when I, I was buying Conan books back in the day, Savage Sword of Conan. Well, the guy at the counter said, hey, you like that one? You'd probably like Savage Avengers, which was a book that I was just like, whatever, it's a spinoff. I'm not going to buy that. Well, Savage Avengers was probably one of the best books of last year. Um, they knew that. They kept an eye on what I was buying. And most, more recently... Uh, one of the other guys said, oh, you're buying a lot of stuff by Mirka Andolfo. She has this new book. Do you want me to add it to your pull list? I'm like, yeah, do it. That's something that a smart business will do anyway. But anyway, speaking back to um, the quality of the books is the, basically the profit margin that you, you could see in comic books. People aren't, there's a lot of competition out there between, I think D&C once said that, you know, you can either buy a $5 comic book and get entertained for 15, 20 minutes, or you can buy $10 worth of, you know, out of, what's a Netflix 
subscription now monthly is ten dollars fifteen dollars and you'll get a whole month of of entertainment it's dollar per entertainment value you're not really you're not really getting that and once again that'll go back to issue number two which is is management or mismanagement mismanagement of the industry when you buy a book you, a lot of times you're not getting the best writing. You're not getting the best art, especially if it's a comic. If a comic book from Marvel, they've gone, they've they've had a race to the bottom to see just how cheap, just how bland they can do this art and get people to still buy it. Um, there's a lot of you know, there's I can't even remember what's going on in ASM right now. And ASM is one of those books that I think is a traditional book where people just buy it because they used to buy it because. They've been getting it every month for 10, 15 years, and they don't want to break that chain now. Well, guess what? That chain was broken with coronavirus, and now people aren't buying that. You've broken the habit. You've got to somehow get people into it. And I don't think the writing and the quality of that book is what it should be right now. And the quality is part of the reason why the profit and the ability to make money in the comic book industry is down so low, uh, because people aren't buying your product you aren't getting new people to buy your product because they aren't enticed by it. Um, and there's so much else to deal with. That leads into problem two. I'm going to talk about problem two. And this is the biggest problem. Mismanagement. You run the industry. You run your publisher like a club. You wind up with people who... Managers who are club leaders, who are just the leaders of a clique of friends. They're not even really the leaders. The leaders are the people who can get on Twitter and cause enough of a stink that you have to do what they do. Gail Simone, Mark Wade, uh, Heather Antos to a degree, but I don't know why anybody listens to Heather Antos in the industry. Um, there's no track record of success. There's no track record of money making. And in 2020 and in 20, moving forward into 2021, whatever's left of the comic book industry hopefully has learned its lesson to say, thank you for your opinion, go sit over there. Um, the mismanagement runs very, very deep, a lot more deep than you think. When the editors at Marvel and DC allow good writers to write poorly and poor writers to be employed, you have a serious problem. When you have, so people talk about Mark Waite, how good he is, and apparently he just wrote a good Fantastic Four book. Um, I think he's kind of realized that the check has come due and he has to start writing good books again. Um, People talk about, you know, he wrote Kingdom Come 20 years ago. Well, 20 years ago, I was just getting into the military. I wasn't, you know, I was trying to build my career and, and I was broke. So I really, I wasn't buying comics back then. So Mark Wade of 20 years ago, I don't know that guy. That guy doesn't exist to me because I've never really, I've never read anything. I wasn't in the industry when that guy was popular. The Mark Wade that I know is the Mark Wade of the Champions run from 2016, which was awful, and the Mark Wade of H1, Humanity First! That, that's the Mark Wade I know. And that Mark Wade, I don't know how that Mark Wade is even employed anywhere because that stuff was trash. But case after case, you get Gail Simone writing uh, Death Defying Devil, and she doesn't even know the character. She's just making her own character up. She wrote... Domino, which was a Domino book, which became Domino Hot Shots because she didn't want to write Domino. She decided to make this new character and to make it a girl, a team girl book, which doesn't work. It's, it's editors allowing these quote unquote big names to just do whatever they want. And then editors allowing nobodies, talentless nobodies to get shot after shot after shot, get one shots, get number ones. When you get mags. Mags Visaggio is a perfect example of that. Um, it should have been three strikes and out. When you do three, three books that are just like, meh, whatever, you should have been out. When you get someone like Zoe Quinn, once again, mismanagement. Taking Vertigo, whoever, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy who was in charge of Vertigo, but his bosses said, okay, you get to be in charge of Vertigo. And then when you saw the openly blatantly racist border town and then you saw just completely bland uh goddess mode and you saw all the stuff that came out from from vertigo that wasn't vertigo quality it wasn't the level that that people knew from vertigo you have the problem with management when they're allowing things like that to happen beyond that you go to the behavior now 
for years, these editors have hidden behind the term freelancer. You know, uh, Max Bemis tells fans to eat his ass. Uh, you know, just bad behavior from Dan Slott, Dan, bad behavior from all these other people. And they've been hiding, they've been going the easy route. They've been doing the thing. Managers sometimes don't want to deal with a problem because they could piss them. They're, they're you know, non-combative. To be a manager, you sometimes have to step on someone's toes if they're not doing the things you want. But that's what it is. You get people who are more worried about being popular with the popular kids as opposed to being popular with the kids who are the stockholders of the, of the company. So you wind up with situations where editors in charge make excuses for bad behavior. Like, oh, he's, he's not really an employee. He's a freelancer. Well, you got to step up and you got to put your big boy pants on. You got to put your manager pants on. You got to go call that person up and say, hey, knock it off. You're hurting my brand, you're hurting the character, and you're hurting my paycheck. I'm not going to have that. Yes, you're a freelancer, but if you keep that stuff up, you're going to be free to get your ass lanced somewhere else. That's how you talk to them because they're your employee. They're not your employee. They're a, they're a freelancer as you've liked to hide behind for so long, but you're still the person who calls them up and says, hey, I got an assignment for you. You're in charge. Be the adult. The last two parts I want to touch on really quick are sort of the, you know, Marvel is the health of the, of the industry. Well, Marvel's been on a campaign of wokeness, of trying to chase this phantom audience that doesn't exist. Well, they exist, but they're not an audience that goes and buys comic books. They don't go. They like the idea of a Muslim superhero. They like the idea of Captain Marvel, a female, being the most powerful Marvel superhero. They don't like the idea of spending money on a comic book when they can go pirate it. They don't like the idea of going into a comic shop when they can just pirate the comic if they actually want to read it. They like the symbol. They like the node saying that, but they don't, they're never going to go. And you're, you know, you're trying to replace us, people like me, who, you know, we were born in the, in the 60s and 70s, and then we grew up, and then we were the money behind the boom of the 90s. And then the crash of the, of the, crash of the late 90s was partly because of, you know, the, the prospecting, and, and, you know, you were doing foil covers here and this and that, variant covers. But the real crux behind that was we went to college. We started families. We started careers. We started jobs. We didn't have money for comics. But then a decade or so later, you start to see a boom in comics again. Guess what? That's when we came back. We had jobs. We had careers. We had more financial security. So we started buying comics again. You're trying to replace us with the Phantom audience. You don't need to replace us. We replace us. The fans who created the boom in the 90s, who created the comeback, who paid for that, we replace us. I have two kids. I want to be able to pass on the love of these characters and show what's great about these characters to my two kids. And I want them, hopefully, to get into it and want to follow the stories of these heroes, not these, these former heroes who act like villains now, that I want them to be able to do that. I replace me. Just entertain me. I'll replace me to the, to the younger audience. And that leads to the final point. The stores. The, I don't want to say weak link in the chain because the store isn't the weak link. The weak link is the bad comic books getting to the shelves of the store. When they go to the shelves and they don't sell, that's a, that's a major problem in the industry. That's where you start to fall down. If you fix problem two, problem two, the management, will fix problem one. And problem two and one being fixed will lead to problem three being fixed. And until we get some of that, until we see some of that in the industry, until we see people putting on their big boy pants the industry is going to die, and we may, it may actually be too late. We may be seeing a post-floppy comic book industry. Now, what I think it will become, I may do another video on that going, coming up, but uh, tell me what you think in this. You know, tell me if I'm, if I'm spot on. Tell me if you agree with anything. Tell me if you disagree with anything, because I think, I think Ethan's going to hit me with a response video, and I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to enjoy it. He's a young guy, and he's very much a traditionalist. He likes the floppies, but... Um, you guys go have a good day. Go find something you like. Go find something you love and do it. Bye.